Yeah. It's homecoming though. I'm used to the stage. I was trained here. Okay, so many, many years ago, several hundreds of thousands of years ago, before there was internet, before there were cars, before there were TVs, even before there were radios, there were no stories. And people were subject to a very boring life. And after a day's event, a conversation between a couple would go like this. How was your day today? It was okay. What did you do? I planted yams. And then the wife would take the turn to ask. So how was your day today? It was fine. What did you do? I cleaned the house. And that boredom went on and on for a long time. Until one day, the wife said to the husband, you know, sometime I wish we could, we could have a less boring life. We could have some interesting things to do. And the husband said, well, interesting things do happen every day, but I simply do not know how to tell you. And then the third voice answered, what you need to do is tell stories. And they were shocked. They thought there were just two of them in the room. But then they looked up, and a spider was crawling down on the wall and came to them and said, I am a Nancy at your service. And they were shocked. They never expected spiders to speak. And then the spider said, I have listened to you two for the past three months, and you bore me. You don't have any interesting thing to say. You should tell stories. Mind you, that was the first time they ever heard about stories. And they thought, stories? What does that mean? And the spider said, you need to weave the events of your lives carefully and present it in an exciting manner. And they thought, that sounds like fun. Uh, uh, well, where do we get some of the stories? And the spider said, I know someone who has. I said, who? Miami, the sky god. And I thought, forget it, that's a bad idea. Naomi is a very stingy god. She hasn't even given rain in the past three months. How would she probably give her stories to the likes of us? And the spider said, you won't know unless you ask. And then they thought about how possible that is. Naomi lives up there in the sky. And then the spider, hero of man and woman, at that moment said, I am a Nancy at your service. I will help you. And then the spider walked out majestically and went on to Naomi, who was just completing a story about a tiger and a dog when she felt some tickles on her nose and Oh, Anansi, it's you. What brings you up here? And he said, I've come to ask a great favor of you, great sky god. I was thinking if you would probably be willing to share some of your stories with man, they're so bored. Naomi said, share my stories with man? I simply cannot appreciate it. And the spider said, well, uh, the man have concluded that you're a very stingy god. And Naomi said, well, I don't care about what man thinks about me. And the spider said, okay, everybody has got to get, have a price. Name your price. At this point, Naomi felt very offended and thought, you, tiny little spider, asking me to name my price. All right, I'm going to give you my stories. If only you can complete three tasks. First, I need you to bring me Onini, the longest python in the river. Bring me Mboru, the angriest hornet in Africa. And bring me Osebo, the fiercest leopard in the jungle. And that was a suicide mission, right? And then, Anansi thought about man and decided to brace up and said, it shall be done. Miami got angry, but Anansi walked out. And on his way, he was thinking, I am already dead. How can I catch these three scary creatures? And then he thought, everybody has a weakness. Onini is a very proud preacher. I know what to do. And then Onini was just returning when Anansi saw him. And Anansi said, uh, Onini, you know what? I was just having 
in an argument with my wife that you're the longest python in the river and she does not believe me. Let's prove it to her. Let me tie you round this log. And Donini was already getting upset that somebody is contesting that he actually is the longest python in the river. And he willingly laid across the floor. And Anansi carefully tied Onini on a log of wood with his web. <laughs> and said, now you are my prisoner, Onini. I am taking you to Niagara the Sky God. Onini started threatening, but it was too late. And then he thought, one down, two to go made his way, got a guard, the perfect hornet's trap, and went on his way to Mboro and said, my brother Mboro, there is going to be a flood, come into this garden, let me keep you safe. Mboro did not even think about it because all that he has in his head is walk and high temper, and then he ran straight into the guard, and also trapped him there, two gone, one to go. And then he thought, oh Sable, that's going to be a huge task. He's so fierce and fearless. I know her weakness. She has bad temper. And she likes smashed yams. And he thought about the old gun baby trick. The old gun baby trick is um, that which you, can, um, you get a doll baby, pour some ooey gooey glue over the doll baby, and you know, it's like a trap. And set a bit of mashed yam in front of the doll baby. Of course, as expected, Osebo wanted some of the mashed yams, and she asked, but the doll baby was just looking because it was a doll baby and could not speak. And Osebo got angry that she was just, you know, ignoring her, and she hit her with her two front claws, and she got stuck. At that moment, she still did not think about stopping, and she went on to hit into her with her two hind claws, and she got stuck. And then she wanted even attack her with a ah! and she got stuck. And that was how Anansi captured these three mighty creatures and took them to Nayan. Okay, so this morning I'm going to be speaking to you about drama therapy. And to do that, I'll do three things. First, I'll give you a definition of drama therapy. Um, second, I'll explain some forms of drama therapy to you. And finally, I would explain to you how you are all already wired for drama therapy. When I tell people what I do, I say I'm a drama therapist, and then they think, drama therapy, what does that mean? Are you going to do a play for us? Drama therapy is the intentional use of drama and theater techniques to achieve therapeutic goals. Of course, drama therapy is not yet present, as it were, in Nigeria as a recognized field as just other creative, um, other creative arts therapies. But it's well present in advanced worlds and they're already utilizing the effect. And here, um, I've done a couple of projects in prisons, in psychiatric facilities, and with people who do not even have clinical diagnosis on drama therapy, with secondary school students, with university undergraduates, and people um, just have the same experience, the same testimony about it. It's very cathartic, and that's what I'm going to be talking about today. First, like I said, drama therapy is the intentional use of drama and theater techniques to achieve therapeutic goals. I want you to mark the word intentional. That is, drama therapy does not just happen. The fact that I have my first degree in theater arts here does not mean I just put up a play and say, yes, I've done drama therapy. Because it has to intentionally achieve a particular goal, which is rooted in psychotherapy. Now I'm going to go to the forms of drama therapy. I'll talk about the forms as the ones that end in the process and the ones that go on into performance. I remember an experience I had when I was working with some secondary school pupils and they heard that some people were coming to do drama therapy with them and many of them, the ones that were suggested by the school to be in the group, came and during the interview they were trying to present this their portfolio of how they act in church, how they're beautiful actors, when are we going to do the play, which play are we doing? And they were disappointed when I said, there is no play. I thought, so what is the drama therapy about it? And I said, don't worry, it promises to be fun and you're going to be better people than you were when you started. And so, we started the process. Um, some drama therapy um, sessions, some drama therapy projects do not go into performance at all. However, we use 
drama and theater techniques to engage the participants in a process that helps them achieve a better mental state of health that facilitates growth in one way or the other. Um, some techniques, uh, if I should just throw in terms, like sociodrama, psychodrama, are used in drama therapy, but this engages the participants, the people, either people who have clinical diagnosis or people who just want to grow in their everyday activities, in their career, it, it um, engages them in an experiential process that uses them, the participants, to um, go through this psychotherapeutic process. On the other hand, there are some um, forms that uses performances. Some use storytelling, theater, um, self-revelatory performances. However, in this case, the process is still very, very important 